Chris Duffin here with Mike O'Hearn, and we're going to talk about longevity in the sport. And who better to talk about it with than a man that's been in the sport for quite some time? And uh, what was it you said a, a six four six total for thirty five years? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I I'm not even aware of any like major injuries that you ever had. Uh, doesn't mean that you haven't had any. Um, but uh, what? What does a typical you know week look like you as far as you know things that you think help keep you injury free? Uh, you know the only times I've had owies, I've never had an injury. I've had owies, and uh, the owies would come from uh, shows like Battle Dome with Gladiators. Oh yeah, uh, see I, how that I, could I, happen. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'd get dinged up there because you, I you got to go out there and fight you know three to six guys a day, where they're just going against one person, um, and we'll have to fight them in two or three games a day. So in that aspect, I've had little dings, but the one thing that always kept me together is going back, not going back to the weights, but staying consistent with the weights, consistent with the, the basic movements. Here's, here's a, which is funny to me. Um, I mean, strength is a way of preventing injury. No, I do not know where you heard that. <laughs> this is not true, I will put it down. It's, it's crazy. I don't know when people think they go from beginner to intermediate to, to advanced. I don't know how many years that is, and I don't know what the numbers are, because of the one thing that I believe, and trust me, I've been in this long enough, I've done every diet. I've done every kind of workout there is. Um, you know, it's the one thing that I always go back to and always go to is, is the squat, bench, and dead, and with heavy weight, um, and the secondary stuff with set heavy weight. And it always keeps my body functioning and together. And I don't know why everybody else goes away from that or they go away from it from at a certain age. And when I do lectures or anything around the world, I find that it's like you, you, you hit 30 and everybody's like, okay, I'm not lifting heavy no more. But you're 30, you're a puppy. Right. Yep. You know, in my world, you're a puppy. You, you, what are you talking about? You're saying, no, oh, I don't want to hurt my back and stuff, you know? And it's. A year later, boom, they hurt yeah. themselves. Yeah, we had that discussion earlier today, and I was talking about people getting pulled out because they've hurt their back. And I'm like, that's only going to make you worse. Like, what do you mean? i got to have time off. I'm like, you never fixed what was broken to be, what, what you weren't doing right, right. To, that allowed you, because you were doing something wrong. That's why you hurt. And now you're going to take time off, which is not going to have you working on actually getting better and patterning the right programs into you know your your system and the time off is going to make you weaker yeah so now you're going to go back and be weaker and still not know how to know the right way to do it and and that's the one thing that your injury risk is going to go through the roof yeah it, it seemed like and i remember this one incident um i was doing powerball and uh my knee hit the ground and it split the pads. So th there was a little hole in the pad uh, where the pads come together, and so it hit concrete. Dang. Um, you know, I continued the game. There's no stopping. Uh, the next day I woke up and I'm like, wow, that bad boy is, you know, swollen and stiff. And you had a few days between filming and stuff, and it was just right back to the squatting, getting the motion back into it, bring down the swelling. Um, and didn't go away from it. And I remember that more than any other time because, boom, I was filming again two days later. And I'm thinking, what would everybody else done? What would other people yeah. done? Would they just go, I'm staying off it, I'm going to raise it, I'm going to ice it and do nothing? Um, maybe that would have worked or wouldn't have worked. But for, for me, any time, any kind of always, I'd go back to anything and, and start pressing again. And I'm, I do stuff. Old school stuff like behind the neck pull downs. I do behind the neck shoulder press. Um, I don't run away from exercises. I go, no, no, do not do these. My thing is full range of motion so and we, loose in the whole body. So you're saying movement is a healer. <sighs> I am. Mm -hmm. I am. The, I did it in the I, layman's terms, I, I thought. I, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, 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 well, I can't disagree with you. So, uh, so I do uh, injury rehab for a lot of clients. And uh, that's something that people are surprising. Like, I'll assign them to be doing, you know, they may be body weight because that's all they can do, but body weight squats and split squats and a bunch of stuff like that four times a day. Like, sets of 20, 
you know, like I want you at your office desk, I want you in the morning, I want you doing this to heal, you know, maybe a groin tear or back injury, or whatever. Obviously, we've got to move correctly first. Right. So we want to make sure that we've got that dialed in. Um, but this movement is a healer. I've, I've got multiple clients right now, uh, bodybuilders, that uh, detach pecs, you know. And, you know, I've got them doing almost like basically grounded rooted incline presses against some band type stuff, different things very, very early in the process. That's and my surgeons are like, they're, they're like, like, no way. They're like, I can't. They come in for their checkups and they're like, oh my God. I, you, That's you awesome. Know, what are you doing? I need to know because I've never had that, I've never had a client heal like this. Like, we, we go back to training. We go back to training. Back to training. But, but I, you have to move it. correctly. So again, how did agree. how did you learn the movements? When did you learn? Were you taught by someone in high school? I know you've referenced like watching some of the big uh, deadlifters and Dead, squat, wasn't squatters, watching. Like, I was I was w right there with them. Um, it was a gym, and I was twelve and thirteen years old. Um, and I was training with guys uh, that most of you probably wouldn't know unless you know the history of it is uh, Jeff Magruder. Oh, yeah. First 242 or to get 605 on the bench. Jeff's been in my gym a couple times. He's passed away now, but um, Jeff is uh, Jeff was my mentor. Um, and in his gym, he would bring guys in like um, like Cohen, uh, Doug Furness, yep. uh, Doyle Kennedy. And these guys are big squatters like Doug, uh, Doyle Kennedy, a deadlifter, um, Ed, everything. Um, so I'm this 12 and 13 year old kid around these beasts and watching them squat and lift. And then I would jump in on a rack and start doing it too. And that's where I originally so you, learned. You, then you learned from some, some you had a, a very good experience. Badass then. crew, right? A, unfortunately, I think this is a big problem. I see a lot of, you walk into a lot of high schools and colleges and they're being taught with really crappy technique. Like, so their squat isn't gonna heal, heal that knee split, right? Their deadlift isn't gonna heal that back end. Right? right. Right. So that's, I don't know how we get around yeah, that. Yeah, so I guess I, so, so it's, I, I like was what you're doing there. works, Yeah. but not many people have the opportunity like early on to learn to do it properly like you have the opportunity. Yeah, I, I guess I left that out. I didn't even think about that. But, I'm not saying squats heal you. I'm saying proper form squats heal you. Right. Or proper deadlifts um, or hold you together. Because that's the one thing. Like I, I was at an expo all weekend. And you stand on your feet the whole time. And you're shaking hands and, and meeting people and taking pictures and doing shoots. Um, and uh, uh, first class isn't first class anymore. So I'm in, in, you know, trying to get comfortable. And so a weekend of that, I felt banged up. Got up at 4 o'clock uh, Monday morning, went in squat. Oh my God, did I feel good two hours later. And it's, it's yeah. amazing um, that I still, you know, to this day, and, and it wasn't, I didn't go into the gym, and, and well, <laughs> my approach was to go into the gym and go moderate, right? Uh, first day back in the gym, I'm really stiff, get loose. There was a big monster in the rack next to me. I said, forget the workout, let's just go. <laughs> and then, and, and, you know, boom, we went crazy. And uh, yeah, so it was just one of those things. But I felt, and it always happens. After the workout, I feel so good. And, and so that's relaxed and movable. That's a thing I think that there's a miss sometimes on though is um, people don't treat training like a job. Like you need to go back to a job tomorrow and the next day and the day after. So you need to push yourself. But at the same time, you can't dig a grave, right? Because you're not gonna be able to make it in tomorrow and you're gonna lose your job and not be able to pay your mortgage, right? right? right. So it, it should leave you refreshed. Like um, there's a, yeah, it's, you've, gotta, you've gotta understand that balance of you know pushing yourself. But if you're putting together things together in a manner that are absolutely just Pushing you, you know, you got to think about it differently. This is not a Friday night party. <laughs> Maybe it is every you're now and then the next day. Yeah, but, but yeah, you've got to. This is this is. Think about it as a job. Like, go in, put your best in, try to be the best that you can be every day. And that's. But, I think that's my approach. But don't try to put in a twenty-two hour workday. Again, yeah, agree. There's 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 a. Uh, as much as we want to tell them. Everybody that's watching, go be an animal every single day. 
be a barbarian in the gym. Yes, I'm saying that, but at the same time, train smarter, not harder, in yep. a sense. You still gotta be an intelligent person to understand 22 exercises in 37 minutes with 75 reps in between is too much. Right. You know, still go in there and be intelligent enough to go beast mode, but, uh, you know, leave so, correctly. So what does, uh, you know, we talked, so I'll, 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 I'll share uh, from our morning discussion, but you usually do like one primary movement yep. and two to three, you know, assistance exercises after that. Yeah. So pretty reasonable approach, something that mimics a lot of my programs. I think, um, I think you'll what is your warm, What is your warm ups and stuff like that look like? Um, I do very little on any kind of warm-ups. And what I mean by very little is I, I may do, uh, like today we did inclines, to give an example. And I went in and did 135 for one rep, 225 for one rep, 315 for one, 365 for one, 405 for one, and then I hit my 455 for one. Mm -hmm. And then I started my set to five. I did 405 for five. And so that was basically my warm-ups into it. Um, I don't get in there and I don't do 10 to 15 reps on each set. My belief is this, it's the movement gets the body going. And the movement itself is not the warm up. It's in between. It's get the movement going, okay, walk away, now the blood's flowing. Get back in, go again, a little bit heavier. Um, instead of, I, I see guys go in the gym and they're gonna go up to 500 pounds on squats and they're gonna go, 15 to 20 with 135, 10 with 225, 10 with 315, 10 with 405, and now they're at 500 for their working sets. But you're already so fatigued from everything you just did. And it's like, I would rather take ones all the way up, understanding that my body is ready and stretched out and it's got blood in it in a healthy way, and then hit my working sets with a heavier weight. So I'll ask you a question. I'm gonna to jump to some conclusions maybe. Go. Um, but I am guessing that when you're doing that rep, you're very focused on what it looks like and how it feels. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So this it's is not just I, this is what I see. exactly. So when I see that person doing the 135, the 125, they're usually really sloppy, sometimes really fast, faster than they faster than it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say the word should loosely, but uh, faster than any normal reasonable weight they would move would move, right? And uh, oftentimes it seems that's where people propagate an injury from, is when they're not thinking about it as being perfect. It's like, I gotta do a bunch of reps, let's just crank them out, be done. And then by the time then by the time you get to 400, you're like, oh, there's a tweak going on in here. They're, gotta do some something. Yeah, and it didn't happen at the 400, it wasn't propagated. Like my deadlift warm ups, so we, if I'm gonna do like, let's say 850 for a triple, my warm-ups would look like 245 for a single, 445 for a single, 645 for a single, 735 for a single. I have 100 pound plates, that's what. So I just toss 100 on all the way, then I, have to throw, then I have to throw 90s on, and then I'm gonna go 850 for maybe three to five reps. I have more reps in my work set Right. Then I will in all my warm-up. But every one of those singles, I'm working on perfection. Hi, you are so pretty. Are you a green oh, at this stage? So yes. <laughs> oh, got love now. <laughs> Striker and Panda want to jump on this team. <laughs> you got a baby. But I, I, don't, I don't think a lot of times people, when they're cranking those out, I'm not saying it's bad to do reps. Come here, not guys. at all. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, you can edit this. Get up. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a there's a lot of ways to roam. I'm I don't think either of us are telling people not to do a bunch of warm ups, right? No, I'm not saying know. I'm not saying do but, it. But I'm also but saying don't fatigue yourself. It, don't yeah, definitely don't fatigue yourself. But also think of practice. Every one of those reps, you're teaching your body what you want it to do. And so if you're sloppy, just focusing on cranking out ten and getting yeah, out of the way, see, you're actually yeah. possibly doing damage. And telling, you know, teaching you just did 10 reps the wrong way. It's like, oh, I got, got it's just 225, I'm gonna be squatting 600. It's, it's nothing, it's, it's no big deal, it's nothing. Um, one thing that I do is, and you'll see it tomorrow, like when we squat and stuff, is, like you said, my, my form is, I love my form, because my form keeps me mobile, it keeps me stretched out. 
and that also puts me in a point of uh, power position to where I'm not just, because one thing that's not important to me, i make this clear, I don't need to squat a thousand pounds for mm -hmm. me. Um, so I would rather have half of that, um, and I don't want to have 40 inch thighs, but I'll take some of that. That's what I want. I want to be strong, but also develop the muscle. And so I want to take out certain stuff. Like like today, my Heath kept saying, go, get, get that moving. I want to train, I want to do the reps and stuff, but at the same time, I want to just manhandle the weight and bring it down slow and then explode. And, and I do that a lot more. And I've noticed that in my lifting this last, I would say last four or five years, that I have put on more muscle because of what I've done when it comes to the form of my training. Um, power lifters use speed, because that's explosion. Mm -hmm. Speed and strength is power. Yep. Boom, you need to do that, and you have to do that. Bodybuilders, I find, go too slow, and they don't use enough weight. Um, they go moderate to low weight and, and just really isolate, isolate. For me, I need to do both because my ultimate goal is to continue to try to act and continue to try to um, walk down the street and look like a superhero. That's that's my goal. It's not about winning a show or winning a powerlifting. I mean, it's just I just want to look like the comic book heroes when we were kids. Right. That's what I want to look like. Um, and so with the with the form and stuff right now is it feels first of all it just I'm sitting there thinking about it too when I when I squat and deadlift. It's just. I love how it feels, but I love how the contraction of the muscle on the speed that I utilize it at this stage in my career relative to early years. Because when we were a power lifting, man, I would hit 500 just, da -da 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 -da. I'd be that kid, you know what I mean? Right. 20 years old, I'd be like, let's get up, get up heavier, <laughs> you know? Speed demon. Um, I want to hear the rattle of the weight and stuff, which is great for power lifting. And you got to do it that way. Um, but because I wanted to have a body too, I wish I would have told my young self, all right, get the powerlifting done now. If you're gonna do bodybuilding, slow it down. You go back into powerlifting, speed it up. Um, so, healthy, longevity. Sounds like, sounds like it's worked through the years for you. And we're so. getting better. Oh, I know what I was gonna say. I was gonna say this earlier. I don't know when people begin, when, when people, because this is something I think is hilarious. Sorry, sorry for saying this. I don't understand when people go, I'm a beginner, I'm an intermediate, I'm an advanced. And, and I didn't finish this earlier because of the fact that everybody switches up or they go away from things. And, and, and something I see, because I've been doing this for 35 years, I still don't think I'm an advanced lifter. And squats, dead, and bench still work for me. And they still develop my muscles. And so one thing that I was going to say is that where is this written? that you have to change your programs, completely change the exercise, completely change everything, or your body's gonna to adapt to it and it's gonna, your body will adapt. But don't you think if you're squatting reps of five, going to reps of eight is change? Absolutely, yep. But it's just this much. It doesn't take but, a lot of change. But people, yeah. for some reason, think, no, I was doing squats, now I gotta do high bar, front squats, reverse angle, hanging to my toes, because <laughs> I can't do this no more, because that's my body. Man, squats, and the secondary stuff, if you change the reps, that's changing it, and your body doesn't adapt to it, yep. and you get a shock, it, and they continue to grow. I hate that the fact that people go away from things so much. So, yeah, I mean, I've been squatting since I was nine years old, and I still, get leg development from it today. Yeah. And I'm 97. Squats so, are, uh, that's a long time. Squats are pretty damn important. Right? It's the king of the lifts in my yeah. opinion. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I see where you're coming from. And uh, you know, I'm like right now I'm doing front squats and I've been doing them for, God, I'm not sure how many months now. And it's, I'm I mean, excited it's, by the it, way. it's do something different, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah, at some point I'll switch back to back squats, but it wasn't for some like, I want to hit this or this or you know like yeah, some other thing. Just, uh, uh, but you didn't I, do this. You didn't. I, go I've never. I haven't done front squats for ten years. I want to do them. It's entertaining. Right. I want to see what I can work up to. I guess my point is, you didn't go from squats to go. No, no. I'm going to do hack squats and leg extensions now. Right. I'm going to leave all that rack stuff alone. And, and you realize, I oh, just switch it over to front squats. Go back to back squats when you want. Yeah. But you don't have to change so dramatically. So. Yep. Yeah. I, I I agree. Yeah. It's like this. That, that playbook doesn't 
throw it out the window. It's no good anymore. But it seems like with the, that with the new generation, they you change your program every 12 weeks. Go from reps of one to reps of 30. It's like, <laughs> guys, you don't have to go that extreme. It's not that. It's no. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and you know what I think is funny is we understand behind the curtain of Oz. We understand that magazines have to put out articles. Magazines have to come out with something new each month. You know, next month is Eat Grass and Grow because they're out of everything else in a sense. Um, but be intelligent enough to, if you're reading stuff on the internet, if you're reading or, or people are giving you information, sometimes just common sense helps you in this world and, and, and mostly in weightlifting. Yep. So, and, and, and now you've got the, the other end of the spectrum where, um, because I, I'm known for like promoting a lot of like scientific or evidence-based practices and stuff like that. And uh, so people really love, you know, the science and they'll, they'll spend hours upon hours reading research articles on PubMed and following this person and that person and, and like extrapolate and build these really extensive diet and training plans about ref this piece of research and that piece of research. And which I think is great. We need to be educated. You need to be constantly searching. But you got to get in the trenches and test it like yourself. Like, 100%. You, you, 100%. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't say this works, that doesn't work unless you've done it. Um, and you, yeah, you've got, you've, got to, you've got to get in the gym and train. Yeah. And I think that's another piece that sometimes people get too wrapped up and ahead of themselves. And uh, on, on the research and the analytical side of the sort, it's just going, no, I, let's just get in the gym and train. Put it in and it's like, and, and I say that wait, too. We're not going to sit around and wait till you wrap up, write up, you know, this perfect training plan. Right. And, so and something I said, like I've been in this long enough to understand this. Uh, I've done the push pull routines. I've done every kind of routine there is. But what worked for me is basically uh, what I do today, um, and I'll switch it up. But I recommend everybody to try everything. Don't just do a push pull routine or, or one body part a week kind of routine. Try everything. See what works for you because yes, everybody's exactly. different. So, all, we all respond differently. Yeah. So, and, and it goes with the nutrition the same way. Um, the only thing I think that I will come back to is while you're doing all that, think about the future. So, if you're one of these people that wants to do fasting all the time or, or cardio all the time, great, but understand you think, think about it as a lifestyle, not a temporary one thing can I, get, I can I do this for the next 10 years yeah it's that's what I was I don't need I'm, I'm doing a diet oh, no 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 is there is no diet you need to like pick something that you can live with yeah and that's not going to be the same thing because we all have different lifestyles we all have different discipline levels yeah. we all have you know all these other factors so what works for you isn't going to necessarily work for the next right. person because the constraints they have to work around yep and their goals goals constraints and you know all those other factors. Hold on though, doesn't everybody want to look like a comic book superhero? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys do! <laughs> so, thanks for doing this, man. All right, I appreciate thanks, you taking the time. Thanks for sharing. Absolutely. I want to see this front squat. Okay. Oh, jeez! <laughs>